This section is about homeostasis. Homeostasis means keeping our body's functions in a steady state so everything works properly. We're going to look at how the body regulates temperature and how the kidneys control excretion and osmoregulation. That's how water levels in the blood are regulated. First, how do we control our body temperature? This next clip takes a look at one method. Can you think of any others? Evaporation happens when molecules of water try to turn into vapour. To do that, they must break free from the surface of the water. And breaking free takes extra energy. If the water is resting on warm skin, the nearest available energy is the heat energy from that skin. So the molecules take the energy they need from the skin and break free. That leaves the skin with less heat, so it cools down. This is why we sweat when we get hot. A microscope reveals the body's cooling system. Tiny glands in the skin which can let out water from the blood. Once the water's evaporated and the body's cooled down, the glands stop sweating automatically. There are other ways the body controls our temperature. If the body gets too hot, blood capillaries dilate to increase the flow of blood to the skin to remove heat. Also, hair muscles relax, so the body's hair lies flat and heat can escape. Too cold, and the capillaries constrict to reduce the amount of heat being lost from the blood through the skin. And the hair muscles contract, making the hair stand up, trapping a layer of insulating air to keep the body's heat in. This animation is also on the GCSE Bite Size Biology website. Draw up two columns with the mechanisms that raise the body temperature in one column and the mechanisms that lower the body temperature in the other. Don't forget, you can always go back and have another look at the animation. So, how did you get on? Mechanisms that raise the body temperature include vasoconstriction, where the blood vessels near the skin surface narrow to reduce the flow and loss of heat from the blood. Shivering, that's rapid involuntary contraction of the muscles to produce heat. And fat stored for insulation. There's also heat gained by contact with something warm. Mechanisms that lower the body temperature include vasodilation, where the blood vessels near the skin surface dilate to increase the flow of blood and loss of heat from the blood. The evaporation of sweat, which causes cooling. Panting in animals, which causes cooling by increasing evaporation from the tongue. And loss of heat by contact with something cool. There's also natural heat radiation from the whole body surface. This next part of homeostasis looks at excretion. Excretion means getting rid of metabolic waste, which the body produces as a result of the different reactions that are continually taking place in it. The two major organs involved in excretion are the lungs, which excrete carbon dioxide and water, and the kidneys, which excrete urine. The skin also excretes water, salts, and some traces of urea as sweat. First, let's see how the lungs excrete carbon dioxide. In the section about human respiration and breathing, we saw how all cells respire and produce carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide is a waste product and is transported in the blood to the lungs, where it is diffused into the alveolar air sacs and excreted or breathed out. Next, how do the kidneys excrete urine? When proteins are metabolised in the body, urea is produced. Urea is poisonous to the body tissue and must not be allowed to accumulate. It gets dissolved in the blood and is excreted by the kidneys along with the excess water and salts as urine. Next, osmoregulation. 
how the water levels in the blood are regulated. Only a third of the human body is made from solid material. Two thirds is water. Blood and body fluids make up about 45 liters in an adult. Every day we pass out a couple of liters in urine. Sweating takes up to another liter and moisture in our breath uses still more. The exact figures depend on what the body is doing. But on average, doctors recommend we drink about three or four liters a day. Drinking too much normally does no harm. The water the body doesn't need is turned into urine by our kidneys. We have two kidneys and they are situated in our back, just at the bottom of the rib cage on the back on either side. This comes from um, a, a post-mortem. It's the human kidney and here is the artery which takes blood from the body and the kidneys filter the blood. Once the blood is filtered, it passes back through a vein just underneath the artery and the filtering process produces urine. The urine gets concentrated in this part here and then it is passed down the ureter, this tube here, to the bladder and eventually we feel the need to pass urine. So the kidney is responsible for regulating the water concentration in the blood as well as excreting urine. There's more about homeostasis in the Higher Tier Science Programme. That's the end of the section on homeostasis.